thank you all. Thank you all so much uh, for, for being here. And it's, it's a pleasure and a privilege to, to see the amount of interest that is starting to come to clean up India and to solve some of the issues, perhaps be sanitation and, and pollution. Uh, sanitation, something which the government's been trying to do for the last four years uh, as, as part of a much longer ongoing process. Pollution, something which is a bit of a crisis point because after what's happened the last couple of winters, let's hope that it'll be better this November. But, but winter is coming, quite literally. And when winter comes, then with it comes the pollution. So we need to do something about it. So why don't I start off by, by Nena, in fact, why don't I get you to kick off your thoughts on what has been done and what needs to be done. Okay, so sanitation. I'm still very concerned that the agenda is not where it needs to be with citizens. The example I like to raise is we have 1,600 kids die every day in India from diarrhea. One jumbo jet goes down with 200 people, you know, think of what happened with Air Malaysia, whatever. It was front page news for a week. But we have the equivalent of eight jumbo jets going down every day and it doesn't get the attention it deserves. The good news is we've moved from toilet building to open defecation free, which suggests that toilets have to be used to be open defecation free. And the area which I would really want to see us focus more on is treatment. If 75% of what we are funneling, you know, the shit is being funneled into a toilet, but if that shit is only going right back into the field, this is going to be one of the most expensive failures that we would have ever embarked on. So I think in terms of focus, we should really be talking a little bit more on the treatment side as sanitation goes. Uh, so that on sanitation, we can come to pollution later. Right, Mr. Ayan, if I can, if I can turn to you on that point. Um, four years later, where do you think we've been successful and where does more need to be done? And any learnings on what we need to do differently? You know, first of all, I think we need to acknowledge that, you know, this prime minister, he came up with a big idea. It's a very big idea when he announced it. Now, what progress have we made over the last four years? If you look at rural sanitation, which is my area primarily, uh, coverage, which is access to toilets, has gone up from about 39% when it started to about 82% today. So there's been a big jump, but I think more importantly is the point which Nana mentioned, it's about behavior change. This is the largest behavior change program in the world, basically. Nana is right in talking about fecal sludge management, which is a major issue in urban and peri-urban areas, and in census towns as well. So I think that it's very important again there to push the behavior change, but also the technology. And we need to sustain this behavior change. Overall, I'd, I'd say we have, uh, we've come a very long way, much more work to be done. Yeah. So in effect, okay. how many people are still defecating? So let, in the let me give you some big numbers. So 600 million people, our estimate, were defecating in the open when this program started. 50 million urban and 550 million rural. Out of that 550 million, today our estimate is that not more than about 175 million people are practicing open defecation. So it's come down by a huge number in the last three and a half years. So the numbers are high, uh, access is high. Now we need to work hard to sustain all this, right? So it's not the end of the story. We talk about the extent of the problem and what all needs to be done, but if those numbers are correct and people are actually using those toilets, it's a pretty big achievement. To what extent are they actually being able to do it? Uh, the usage is it still a problem. I want to start out by uh, just uh, talking about both rural and urban, even though this problem uh, is largely in rural. Uh, I think the survey we did last year, uh, I think we visited 140,000 households across uh, 700 districts. In certain states, uh, the panchayat would tell everyone, if somebody comes and asks you if you have a toilet, say no. Because if you say no, then you might get money to build another toilet. So at some level, I think actually those numbers are an underestimate. Very, very, very rarely does anyone say, I have a toilet if they don't have it, because the assessor actually takes a geotag picture of the toilet to prove that it's there. Now, the second part, which is how much usage is there, right? At some level, unless you actually sit there for the next uh, 48 hours, right, and diligently observe everybody going in and out, you don't really know for sure, 
okay? So all you can do is you can, uh, you can try to triangulate from all sides. And uh, I think we tried to triangulate from all sides and it comes out fairly high. But let's say you're off, right? And let's say it isn't 90%, it's 80% or it's 70%. That's a huge jump from what it was. A few years ago, if somebody saw people defecating in the open, nobody really, I mean, he said, you know, this is the way life is. It never made the headlines of the newspaper. Today, after a town declares itself ODF or tries to declare itself ODF, there are a large number of citizens, including, thankfully, some of our most prominent citizens, who, you know, if they see something like this happening, take a picture, and it makes front page news, which says, oh, look, there are some people defecating in the open. I mean, what an amazing shift, right? We can get so caught up in the numbers, but I think at the end of the day, uh, what we have to think about is, do we have a mind shift, mind shift that we can sustain but, over time? But again, to, to sort of drag you back to the numbers, if you had to make your best guess, how many people in India would be practicing open defecation? So today, out of 4,384, uh, towns. There are 4,384 towns in India. Uh, 2,542 cities out of that are self-declared open defecation free, right? Which is a pretty high number, almost 60%. Uh, as of today, we have inspected 23, 22 of them, and 78% of those have been found to be ODF on the day we inspected them, right? So 78% so were telling, were, were being correct when they said they're ODF. Right. So 22% were well, yeah, so they, have, they get that. another chance, right? So a few months later, the but issue... But you need that, otherwise, you know... No, no, I agree. Every city will say we are ODF. Just <laughs> exactly. Say, By know, the way, everything is fine, and every, then you find out that Every not. district has the right to declare itself ODF, and some states are now declaring... I think the first state declared itself ODF. Between your states and UTs, there are 15 states which are ODF. There are 350,000 villages. And by the way, as Adil said, the Quality Council of India, which uh, carried out the survey, found the usage to be very high, 140,000 household. I think the other point to mention here is, so I, we are fairly confident the numbers are robust. There's a whole sanitation revolution, I'm talking of rural India. There are grassroots level motivators called Swacha Grahis, who are trained in triggering behavior change. Because in the end, it's that interaction between individuals, that interpersonal communication which works. Srinita, you're, you're still looking somewhat skeptical. I'm not even going to go into the numbers. I think it's very important to have this emphasis on sanitation. And to me, that needs to be celebrated. At the moment, I think what I would say is that we need to focus on some of the challenges that are still not completely on the table. A very big movement ahead has been the emphasis on behavior change rather than toilets. But I totally disagree that the behavior change should be shaming and naming. So this whole taking a photograph, whistling, and all the other absolutely filthy things that we have been propagating as a way to build social sanction against sanitation is really bad because you're doing it against the poorest, you're doing it against the most vulnerable, and invariably you're doing it against women. And I have known cases where women have been photographed uh, because they have been defecating in the open, and those photographs have been put out in the village square. That is unacceptable. So the question becomes, what do you do to make sure you incentivize the alternative? We have such poor data, even now, on the impact of good sanitation on health. So I think that is going to be a big challenge to bring the Ministry of Health bring them together to make sure we have really robust data to show people how those changes are making an impact. The other is that we need to focus on water availability. And the third is, the news we are getting back is that you have to worry about the quality of the construction and the quality of treatment. Because if you don't do that, you end up with turning the sanitation cycle into the other end, where instead of it coming through open defecation, you get it through your drinking water because you contaminate your drinking water. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, that, what, what have your studies been uh, found on this? And also, if I might just ask you for any examples that you might have from other countries in the world which have probably solved these problems and solved them successfully. I, I see right, Naina writing this book uh, from a very different perspective. A non-environmentalist writing a book on environment is, is certainly a thing to celebrate, and I, I would 
congratulate Nayana for that. 30 years back, these issues were not being discussed like the way we are doing it now. And I think that's a sea change that has happened in India. I would not look at many foreign examples. Uh, what's happening within this country is also showing what environmental leadership India is showing. Meaning the fact that uh, Bollywood has made a film on this issue. Can this, would this have happened 10 years back, 15 years well, back? We, we've done four 12-hour telethons on the <laughs> issue. If somebody told me 15 years ago, we'd be able to sustain a 12-hour telethon oh. on Banega Swachh India and sanitation and cleaning up the country. In other countries, if you're looking at South Asia or Southeast Asia, in fact, one of the surprising things is on social indicators, including sanitation and various other things, we are much, much lower than Bangladesh. I think it's good to learn from what's happening in these countries. If you're going to Southeast Asia, yes, uh, at, a, at a village level, if you will find uh, sanitation and water as key elements, and that has happened mostly through a lot of decentralized management through giving powers to the villagers themselves or to the village communities. Out here, we are still looking at toilets through a centralized system or being implemented it through a, a government structure. I think government is doing a lot of work, but it will be good if a lot of this work can be decentralized and hap starts happening at the, at the village community level. And that's, exactly. that's going to be important. Thanks, Atul. Just to clarify, this is decentralized completely. This is about... Uh, you know, empowerment of panchayats, individuals. This is about leadership by women in, in making and kids making their villages open defecation free.